So let's talk Yomu versus Suwako, because that is what we're doing. Uh, we're taking a little bit of break from the top eight to look at a really nice set from earlier on in the tournament. This is Zekker versus Suwako, Suwako, Suwako. The thing about Yomu versus Suwako is they're both very polarizingly different characters. Yomu is like heavily melee kind of old school fighting game character and Suwako is like the exact opposite. So there's not a lot of overlap in terms of like situations where one person wants to go for a win because they both kind of just want to play their own game. Yomu wants to dash in, get a hit, and convert into some really standard traditional pressure and Suwako wants to get hits and do Suwako pressure. It's a little bit different. It, it, it's fundamentally the same concept, you know, highs and lows, but there's a lot more catches, there's a lot more cross-ups, and a lot more um, a lot more checks. This is something that you see with Suwako, specifically with the Alt-623, the Iron Rings. It serves as a check more than a catch. So it's a move you can use to land cancel safely into more pressure at the cost of one spirit orb. Without further ado, let's watch. This is the perfect example of what you do in neutral. We see a ah, the replay messed up. That's fine. We basically see Yomu waiting for Suwako to stop using bullets and then going in for a melee. Yomu is very fast, but kind of has to pick a direction. She can't really change directions too well. She's a little bit clunky in that regard, uh, similar to Oku. Fast but clunky. In in this kind of instance, getting a uh, J5A J6A hit worked out, kind of, but it put. Uh, Zekker in a very awkward situation where I believe he's going to get hit by uh, J8A. Ooh, that barely missed actually. The frame was very close there. That knockdown was kind of a little bit of a fluke. It wasn't necessarily something that was either player's fault, but Zekker capitalizes on it. That was a really nice bait because Zekker was anticipating that Suwako was anticipating that he was going to go in for a dash in melee and had preemptively gone for a J8A to kind of catch the pressure, but Zekker knew this, dashed back and used a bullet because as we know, bullet beats melee. A uh, quick little tidbit, this is called uh, L44, it's the lovely uh, lily pad dash backwards. It gives invulnerability frames and leads to some kind of weird shenanigans specifically in this matchup versus uh, Yomu. On the third hit of dial A, you can go onto the lily pad and back dash and it'll just interrupt the dial string. It's ridiculous. That was a good conversion. I, I like seeing that one. It's it's really nice. It's good, uh, good satisfying rhythm to that one. So let's talk about Suwako's strategy in neutral here. As we see, there's a little bit of a difference in how she can go about in her neutral and strategies involving the lily pad it's the leaf frog sit on a leaf it is really nice it's a very it's a very good looking leaf to be sitting on i wish i were sitting on that leaf but i'm not but suwako is and that's the important part when you're on the leaf you are 
very, very dangerous. It's a very dangerous frog because what she can do is she can conjure a whole bunch of trees that have just this massive hitbox. And that is why the frog on the leaf is really strong. In addition to that, notice how Sawako is sitting inside of the uh, default 2-2-B. It's a slow moving projectile that is ridiculously high graze resist. It's a really, really strong bullet and it serves as a really effective zoning tool. Couple that with the melee threat and that frog is nigh unapproachable right now. So you pretty much have to poke with bullets. As Zekker did excellently there with the 6C. Has a little bit of an unfortunate uh, mix up there in, in terms of the character model not switching back to the correct direction. Conversion dropped because of the J8A. If that was a J6A, I believe it would have landed and it would have converted. That was so nice. Oh my god. Uh, that was the coolest Yomu combo I've seen in a while. So, what happened there is capitalizing on whiff punishes into conversions is always really cool, but this specific way, converting off of the 2C, which is the, the fast kind of shorter version of uh, 5C that Yomu has into the 4 card was just... <laughs> oh, that was spectacular. See, that's the L44 again. So the pressure we see here is a 5C. When Zekker goes for the 6C, he anticipates that Sawako anticipates that he's going for a J6A, which would catch a, a, a jump out. So he instead opts for the 5C, which will extend his pressure because bullet beats blocking. Blocking beats melee in most circumstances. Oh, by the way, J8A hits low. It's like one of the only air melees that hits low. That was just a whiffed DP, but it didn't matter because the frame data just, it worked. It all worked out. It was a mistake, but sometimes your mistakes are just not punishable. So that J5A in the air, it may have seemed like a whiff, but what that actually was, was that was an attempted catch to get a jump out. Because when you're Yomu and you are pressuring somebody well with a lot of wrong blocks, they will instinctively want to get out as soon as possible. So you can capitalize on that by starting to go for catches. In this case, Sawako did not go for any of that and instead uh, capitalized on the J5A whiff. I think that was a misinput. See, this is what I'm talking about, where the slow moving projectile is just indomitable. Even though Zekker grazed through it, it has this, uh, this lovely thing called graze resist, which means that grazing through that bullet does not remove it unless you graze for a certain amount of frames. So if something has like a graze resist of 90 frames, that means that it is going to be, you're gonna be stuck there for a while if you wanna remove that bullet by grazing it. And it's also incredibly dense. I think it's denser than anything Yomu really has by default, except for maybe like the Alt 236. 
That would have been the game end, but that Swako low profiled it just by virtue of the fact that Froggy is small. And we have Tassofro to blame. L44 again. Uh, I'm just going to point out every time it happens because it's not something you really pay attention to until you realize how strong it is. But I know that Sawako as a player is very much somebody who uh, uses L44 to a really strong advantage. Poor Yomu, she just cannot get a dial A in this matchup. That That is just kind of sad. There's so many points at which Yomu's dial A just gets wrecked in this matchup, especially like if you hold a bomb, then it's fine. Oh, the spiritual strike talisman, we call that bomb because saying spiritual strike talisman is uh, it's too much for our fighting game unga bunga brains. Stopwatch was an interesting decision here. It didn't really do anything, but I appreciate Sawako for running it. Notice how Sawako is just kind of camping in that D22 right now. That's why, because Yomu is absolutely unable to approach while he's doing that. Okay, well, the last stopwatch did nothing. The this stopwatch did the opposite of something. It did uh it does the negative. It did a bad thing. That was that was not a good one. That was really cool. And any time that that four card comes out, that is just hype. It's just, it's just one of the coolest looking spell cards. It's just like this really big, big old pink pillar of death that does a whole bunch of damage. It like instantly limits. There's like 4K, big sound. Just, it's really cool. So now notice how Zekker has adapted to the neutral. He is playing a very, very long neutral now because he knows that Suwako just wants to sit in D22. So he is hoping to catch Suwako while he is kind of recasting the D22 because it will expire eventually. So there are points where you have to use it. So if you're caught using a bullet and you get hit by uh, one of Yomu's B bullets, because they do have a pretty wide range, you're going to lose that D22, you're going to lose that cover, and then Zeker can go in for the melee. Exactly as we saw here. Unfortunately, uh, that kind of strategy goes both ways, and Suwako can do it too. So now they're both in Typhoon. I find it interesting that Suwako is currently running the Illness Recovery Charm. It's a health potion, effectively. It will re it'll heal like 1,000 HP, I think. So it'll like heal 10% of your health bar for the cost of one card, which isn't, it's just, it's nothing to write home about. It's nothing bad. However, in normal circumstances, that is removed if you're hit. However, in this instance, in Typhoon, you will not have it removed. It won't be removed. And that would be really important 
if Sawako were actually missing any HP right now, he's basically at full, so there's no reason for him to use it. So now he's using it on a knockdown because he can pretty much assure that while he's pressuring Zekker, he is not going to be taking any damage. He can do some really safe pressure that is going to result in a lot of wasted time on Zekker's part. What this means for Sawako is that he can kind of assure that that duration is going to go to the fullest and he's going to get as much out of that card as he can. See, that was the safest pressure he could have done. Just dial A into the 236. Now, while he did get comboed there, that illness recovery charm did go to its fullest. And then he lost 2,300 HP. So, uh, who's the real winner? He's using it again, this time under cover of the D22. If the pressure wasn't going to work, then sitting in the D22, surely this should work. Unfortunately, uh, Zekker made it not work again, <laughs> but don't worry, he's got another one. L44, again, that's why the third hit of Dial A whiffed there. <laughs> that was... <laughs> okay, that was funny. The J2A, so it just... It's one of Yoma, it's one of Yoma's uh, air melees, and it will drop her straight down, but it dropped her straight down into the D22, and, and she just kind of ran face first into a wall. That was That's a Looney Tunes moment. Those happen sometimes. Oh, yeah, by the way, that D22, if you get hit by it, and that there's green stuff around you, there's like three different things you can have around you. Depending on the color, you'll have a different effect on you. The green one is the one that everybody fears because it means that you're in sun shower. Any wrong block will guard crush you, as we see here. Now, the interesting thing about that guard crush is it generated a whole bunch of weather crystals, which forced sun shower, which means more guard crushes. That, yeah, that was fine. Just go back and, and look at this. I just want to witness it one more time. The 6-6-A twice to the other 6-A, 6-6-A to the five card conversion. It's not a lot of damage, but that, that right there, that's mental damage. <laughs> That's good. That was that was nice. That was fun to watch. And now we see the product of that mental damage. If you just got hit by that really cool combo, you're kind of in a bit of a reverie. So you're not really going to be expecting a block stun. That was an excellent uh, exploitation of somebody's... Um, mental pressure right there. Uh, I see that Zekker has been brushing up on his Machiavellian tactics quite nicely. I am happy to see the practical applications of that. And as we see there, that was the slow neutral while sitting in D22 that Suwako likes doing, and it worked. That is the most textbook application of it. Like, that that's it. That's what it is. You sit in your D22 and you slowly approach with your slow-moving bullet, and you just hop on your leaf and just are unapproachable. 
and then you sit in range of doing uh, L5A? I, I don't know what the clap is. I think it's uh, it's the leaf 5A. It's the one you're sitting on the leaf and you push your neutral melee. I don't know how to play Sawako, but that's that's what happened there. It's it's a really, really useful tactic because it's a really big hitbox because you just clap them with the big old rock hand and it is really strong. By the way, Sawako can convert into a limit off of that. That was an interesting tech here. So normally what you will see Suwako players do is on Okizemi, they will sit on a lily pad because it will give them the option to dash off into a J5A. However, this is going to limit the Okizeme options quite a bit. I believe he's gonna go for a J8A here? No, he didn't. He just went for the neutral jump into another D22. However, he overestimated how much of a dense bullet that was, and he got smacked by the 2-2-B, I believe. That... <laughs> so, if the combo was mental pressure against Sawako, what happened there, the low profile with the lily pad into just getting hit by the D-2-2, that was mental pressure to Zekker right there. So now we see a red color. What that means is any time, what does the red color do? I don't know if this is for sure the case, so don't quote me on this, but I think what the red color does is it sort of acts as a, you touch me, you also hurt kind of thing, where if uh, Yomu were to hit Suwako while the red color was on, he would take damage. <laughs> And since neither player took damage, I have no way to prove or disprove that. By the way, the strategy around Mion, which is the little blue orb doohickey thing there, that's a Yomu's ghost, it is a large portion of her neutral presence. Because effectively, it's just like a little bit of a clone. It's this little orb that follows Yomu around a little bit slower. So if you run really fast to the other side of the map, that orb is going to follow you slowly, giving you effectively two places in the stage that you threaten. This is used for either the 5C or 2C to create a stationary bullet in that area. And it's a little bit hard to maneuver around. It's also a little bit of a learning curve to learn how to use it properly. Oh, by the way, that's Aurora Typhoon. So now they're both going for the long neutral again. Same story where Suwako is sitting in the D22 and Zekker is trying to snipe with bullets. This time he was so convinced that Suwaka was gonna go for more of a slow paced thing that he just mashed on wake up, which is fine. We've all been there, man. It's okay. such an indomitable neutral. So looking back on this, we can see just how much Suwako is giving himself a bullet cover here. In addition to that, he's giving himself a melee cover. That tree is like one of the only instances where you just have this threatening aura of death around you at all times if you're just sitting on the leaf. L44 again. Now we saw the actual application I talked about originally, which is interrupting the third hit of dial A. <laughs> that is a very liberal usage of coin here. 
<laughs> Notice how Sawako is entirely out of spirit. I believe he is about to get crushed. Never mind, River Mist. I spoke too soon. That was so well timed from Suwako. That was going to be a crush into a pretty hefty combo, but now it's going to be punished. Hmm, good sound. It didn't get punished. And the illness recovery charm is out again. And keep in mind that Suwako is currently holding on to the four card Froggy Must Nap. Which <laughs> it recovers even more HP. Man, Sawako feels like a raid boss. By the way, this is probably going to be an L44. No, it wasn't. The one time I thought, damn. There. Now there's the L44. He knows. He's watching me watching him retroactively. Ooh, that was so nice. So, Sawako has used the L44 so frequently here that Zekker anticipated it and went for the 6C instead. That was genius. Oh my god. That was such a good read. So now we're seeing that there's a little bit more of a closeness in the health between both of these players. And that is largely due to Zekker adapting to how Sawako is defending against him. Because previously the L44 jumping back dashing off of the lily pad has been very disastrous for Zekker. However, now he's adapted to it and has instead opted to use bullets at the points where he thinks that Sawako is going to L44. And it is working very effectively right now. And now we're back to sniping and V22. Now we're in Typhoon. This doesn't look well for Zekker. Look at the health deficit. There's a mm, there's not much to be done here. It's, it's scary. This is a very scary point. This is scary for Zekker. That was so close. If he had gotten hit one more time, he would have been done. Now, look at the threatening uh, posture that he's going for. I believe that Zekker right now is fishing for that 5 card, because he knows that it'll end the game if he gets a good conversion off of it. He did! He did! He got the conversion! He went for the crush, he just started spamming B bullets, and he's just like, I want to get the 5 card, let me get the 5 card. I'm just going to start using B bullets until you crush, because you're just going to be sitting in your D22, and you're going to be spamming skills, so you're not going to have any spirit. And I'm going to use that, and I'm going to end you. And it worked. That was so incredible. Oh my god. That was a really nice set. That was... <laughs> Those conversions into spell cards from Zekker were just phenomenal. That uh, that was really nice. I liked that one a lot. Um, yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, he just... He, doesn't oh. got, he literally has to do nothing. Oh! Oh! Okay, now oh. he might want to start thinking because now he gets hit once he loses, so. Yeah. Oh my god! That's it! So... That's it. Oh, is it? It was it? A... Oh, he's still killed! He's still it. killed! He's still killed after the crush! Oh my god! Oh! Wow. It's still killed! Wow. Literally! 5B! 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 